Hi, Anthony Carlo for New York Sports Machine Gridiron Recap alongside Mike Demerges. And after NFL Week 6, the New York Giants and Jets both find themselves with losses in the loss column and both teams lose key contributors on the field. Before we get into the Jets losing to the Broncos 31-17, we will begin with the G-Men and a 27 to nothing loss. Uh, absolutely horrible for the New York Giants. How do you win three games in a row? face a di division rival, and not even show up. The Giants' offensive line came into this game only giving up seven sacks. Against the Eagles, eight sacks. Eight sacks against your division rival. They couldn't pass protect, they couldn't run the ball, and to top things off, they lose Victor Cruz for the season. He's an emotional leader, and he is one of those guys that controls the locker room and certainly a mentor for young wide receivers like Odell Beckham. Mike, you speak about all of the problems, and what this was was a collaborative breakdown. Eli Manning said it best, coming into this game, you can't expect automatically everything to work for you. The Eagles came into this game, Nick Foles moves the chains constantly, LaShawn McCoy coming out of the gate slowly in this season had a lot to prove, and he did so, ran all over the Giants, and what happened to the Giants was, number one, their offensive line was terrible. Pew cannot hold down some blocks that save Eli Manning. This looks like the offensive line of last year, and what this did was make Eli Manning very uncomfortable in the pocket. He wasn't able to get off his passes, and even the running game was affected by this. Andre Williams cannot have a big game with the terrible offensive line, not to mention Victor Cruz, a huge loss. But that secondary, Mike, it looks just as bad for the G-men. Well, Pew basically stunk up the joint, if you excuse the pun. <laughs> now you have Beckham, who's really got to step it up. The, you know, the rookie player's got to step it up, and they got to hope Jennings comes back, and he's able to pick up the load. Uh, Defensively, this was a disaster as well for the Giants, giving up close to 450 total yards to the Eagles. Meanwhile, they only could amass about 250. The Giants looked overmatched in this game. I thought after, after you know winning their third game in a row, I really thought that the Giants could contend for a division title. Now, after what Dallas did in Seattle and Philadelphia's whipping, I don't right. know if the Giants could really compete in this division right now. And Dallas looks certainly like the juggernaut in the NFC East. Well, Mike, you raise a bunch of great points. I mean, if you think about this division, the Giants are flying high. They come into this game on a three-game winning streak, and you figure everything is feeling good if you're a part of this squad. But then you're looking at other teams in this division. The Eagles have been near to flawless. The Cowboys, who just de destroyed the... Uh, Super Bowl champions. Yeah, I mean, this is this is this is a tough division, and what the Giants cannot do is commit ten penalties in a game. What they cannot do is when they're about to score, like Larry Donnell was, they can't have that play come back because of penalties. Will Beatty in that particular circumstance was the reason why the Giants couldn't put any points on the board. Look, if the Giants want to continue to put up any type of threat in this division, they're going to have to, to not only play well, but they're going to have to really narrow down the amount of mistakes they're making. I mean, when you're going up against teams like the Eagles and the Cowboys, the way they're playing right now, they will destroy you with the littlest mistake. Well, first off, too many times under Tom Coughlin's reign, the Giants have been blown out in an away game. It's happened way too many times. I remember back even the Super Bowl year. They went to Indianapolis. They got destroyed right. against Peyton Manning. It's happened way too many times, and it's about time that the Giants make a stand on some of these road games. You can't get blown out and expect to compete for a division against your division rival. And let's face it, you know, the Giants now dropped to 3-3. Three and three. They don't make the playoffs again. That means they haven't made the playoffs since they won the Super Bowl. And let's face it, let's be honest here. They won the Super Bowl. They had that great run, not taking anything at all against the Giants. They were 7-7 seven and seven at one point. They had to win their last two games. I remember that game, and I remember Chris Canty saying, we could learn from this game. And I actually asked him, what can you learn? You're 14 games into the season. Right. But they were able to win their last two games and make that run to the Super Bowl. So they, they were only 9-7 and seven that year. You know, even though the Giants have two Super Bowl victories, for you to say were they want probably one of the two or three top teams in the NFL during any of those years, absolutely not. You could no. say it in 1986, no. they were the best team in the NFL. Right. Even 1990 behind the Buffalo Bills, right. probably the best team. Right. Uh, Maybe it, in these Super Bowl years, they were maybe the fifth or sixth best team in football. Listen, Mike, I can't agree with you more. What you're saying is the truth. All those times 
most recent couple of championships they won, you know, they were beating like te teams like the Patriots and Tom Brady in the Super Bowl. That's a squad that's better than the Giants. But that's exactly what my point is. For the Giants to rise to the occasion against teams like this that are better than them, just like Philadelphia is this year, just like the Dallas Cowboys have been playing this year better than them, they need to limit the mistakes. And what this was was a collaborative breakdown. You know when they say a good team who plays sound fundamentals can beat a better team? That's the Giants' key. But if you're going to give up plays like they did with the Eagles throwing to the tight end Casey, Across the field, the secondary just breaks down. Nobody's near this guy. If you're going to give up plays like that, the Giants have no hope for the rest of the season. I'm sorry. Well, speaking of breaking down, the New York Jets have now dropped to 1-5, and, and pretty much the season is over. Red Rex Ryan is talking like a beaten man. He's totally lost his mojo. And for the Jets to try and sell Geno Smith as a franchise quarterback, are you kidding me? I've played football my entire life. This is a disaster. It's a, it's a part of my learning process. From the get-go, they couldn't run the ball. They can't pass the ball. They had, had a good a defensive game plan for the first quarter and a half. After that, it all fell apart. Look, the Jets have a good, good defensive line, good front seven. The secondary is a disaster. Gee, how are we going to sur survive without D. Milner? I don't know. <laughs> I can't take watching these Jets anymore. I really can't. It's enough is enough as a Jets fan. You look at the numbers, disgusting. Let me break out my notes here. It's all crinkled up from watching this game. I'm sure you uh, crinkled that up yeah. during the game. Yeah. Gino, 23 of 43. Ivory, eight rushes, seven yards. Chris Johnson, a total waste, three of nine. Uh, out, outplayed 359 to 204 in total yards. A total disaster well, Mike, as far as the Jets go. I can't watch anymore. Why would anybody want to be a Jets fan? Why would anybody like myself have season tickets? Let's just send them back. Next time I go to a Jet game, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wear a bag over my head like the Saints <laughs> fans did in the 1970s. Well, Mike, listen, you're, the way you feel now is the way that Jets fans across the board feel. I mean, if you look at the end of that game, it was a sea of orange towards the bottom of yeah. that field. Look, the Jets, have they didn't even have enough energy to boo anymore. That's what this is coming down to. This is the funny part. This is the ironic part. If the Jets were in a different position come this point in the season and they were coming into this game, they would be awarded for a valiant effort against a quarterback like Peyton Manning, against a team like the Denver Broncos. But because they're now leaving 1-5, this is just another continuation of the debacle. No players want to talk to the media. They're disgusted. But, Mike, look at this for a second. Take this into consideration. First half, they have Manning under pressure. They're sacking him. They cut Manning down half the amount of yards he would normally throw in a game that he was vintage Manning. Mm -hmm. That's a couple of positives to look at. But when you look at the state that the Jets are at, the fact that approaching halftime, the Jets are down 10-7, okay? They have the opportunity to go into halftime, this still being a ball game. Rex Ryan, what he says their game plan is to take down Peyton Manning, is use this defense to knock a couple of chess pieces off of Peyton Manning's chessboard, as if Peyton Manning is the best chess player in, in, in history. Now, what Rex Ryan details here is a way to eliminate Peyton Manning's targets, and what he does is try and take the ball out of Peyton Manning's hands. But what they fail to do is one thing, and that is come up with the big stop. Peyton Manning, minutes before we get to the halftime show, what he does is he takes that team and makes it into his own show. He brings the Broncos from the 20-yard line, his 20, all the way down the field for a touchdown to Julius Thomas, 80 yards, and right there, there's the game, going into the second half with that type of score. Well, Anthony, what you're talking about is a Hall of Fame quarterback, a real quarterback. Right. Unfortunately for the New York Jets, and I've watched, been watching games for over 35 years, right. Outside of a couple of years, Ken O'Brien, top-rated quarterback in the NFL 1985. Vinny Testaverde, 1998, right. had a great season. Right. Uh, then right. we had Brett Favre in 2008, Chad Pennington throwing there in 2004, not bad. Right. I've been watching games again for over 35 years, and I've watched some of the worst quarterbacking anybody should be put under. No one should be watch this bad of football <laughs> that I've been watching. Right. Don't sell me as Geno Smith as a franchise quarterback. You know, I'm only 23. I can't. When Julius Thomas catches a touchdown pass and he's laughing, laughing, you can hear him on the microphone saying, that was easy, that was easy. Right. What does that tell you? Even Rex Ryan's vaunted defense, supposed vaunted defense, right. can't stop anybody. He can only do it for so long. Yeah. It's time, you know, you know Rex has so lost Gino's his mojo. 
Gino's not the way. And, and furthermore, this whole, you know, you got the great front four. You, you got the, the front seven. They're good. Everywhere else they got to rebuild. And look, DeBricka Shaw Ferguson's getting old. Nick Mangold's getting old. These are cornerstones of the offensive line you were hoping to build around. They're getting old now. You're talking almost 10 years right now. They're going to have to look to redevelop that. It's going to be a long, long rebuilding process for the Jets, and I don't know where to start. I'm just tired of watching bad football. Just give me a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, if, if you're a Colts fan, you've been watching Peyton Manning and Andrew Luck since 1998. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. How about the Green Bay Packers? You got, Brett, you got Brett yeah. Favre since 90, 92. Now Aaron Rodgers. 93, and then he goes right to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Why can't I have that well, as a Jets fan? Mike, listen, Why do I have that, to watch garbage football all the time? Yeah. The, the, the Jets have made it clear that Geno has been the path they are trying to take. I don't want to no. go down that path. You don't go I, down, I don't want to go yeah. by that yellow brick road. There's a witch at the end of that. Here's the problem here. You go to your backup, Michael Vick, and he's not prepared for yeah. his game. So listen, the Jets, have, in, in that respect, they have just swung and missed twice. And, and they, for a Jets fan, it's becoming very frustrating. So tear it all up. Is that what you're suggesting? John Isaac, listen, he, he in most people's opinion, he's to blame. O- outside, he had cap listen. space. He didn't use it. Now the Jets are losing again. Outside. They're in a worse position than they were last year. And this was the year that they made improvements to the team to go to the postseason. Here, wipe your mouth. Thank outside you. of the top seven, Jets need to rebuild. That's the bottom line. Thank you. Well, after handing that wet tissue back... The New York Jets and the Giants, both frustrating fans across the board. Uh, But for this edition of Gridiron Recap on New York Sports Machine, till next time, for Mike Demurgis, I'm Anthony Carlo.